Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody excited about being in the house tonight? Yes, I don't know about you, but I love to come to the house of the Lord. Uh, this was one of David's favorite plays. Uh, he said, I was glad when they said unto me, yes. let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. I believe David understood that's where his help came from. Anybody need some help? Amen. I believe David knew where his love came from. Anybody need any love tonight? Amen. Well, you're in the right place. We are in the house of the Lord. Scripture lets us know how good and pleasant it is for brothers to come and dwell together in unity. Amen. All right. Well, without further ado, we're going to jaywalk right to the book of Hebrews. We're going to go to the book of Hebrews. Amen. We're going to brew up some things. Amen. God loves coffee. Yeah, he loves coffee. Because he brews. Because he brews. Amen. <laughs> yes, yes. Hebrews 6, chapter 6 and verse 1. That's where the text will be coming from tonight. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1. Hebrews uh, chapter 6, verse 1. If you're there, say, I'm there. Man, it's also on the screen. I'm going to be reading from the ERV. It reads as this. So we should be finished with the beginning lessons of lessons about Christ. We should not have to keep going back where we started. Mm -hmm. We began our new life by turning away from evil. We did in the past and by believing in God. That's when we were taught about baptism, laying hands on people, the resurrection of the, those who have died, and the final judgment. Now we need to go forward to more mature teachings. Amen. 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 And we're going to continue this study we've been in. I'm working on my walk. Amen. Anybody been working on their walk lately? Amen. We've been working on our walk. Um, and quite literally here in the book of Hebrews, Paul is uh, just admonishing the church uh, to begin to move forward uh, from the beginning lessons in Christ. Uh, what are the, some of the beginning lessons in Christ? The born-again experience. Uh, when you begin to move on from the born-again experience, you can position yourself to grow in the things of God. But literally, Paul is letting us know that uh, there are some beginning teachings that you should have under your belt. You should uh, have the beginning teachings of baptism. How many of y'all enjoyed baptism last week? <laughs> Amen. Uh, this past week, yeah. Uh, Paul is letting us know that baptism is something that you should know about. Uh, laying on of hands when we come around here and we pray for each other and sometimes the Lord may impress upon my spirit to lay hands on someone. Uh, sometimes I may rebuke the devil. Sometimes I might encourage the brother. Sometimes I might build them up. But that's literally the laying on of hands and the resurrection of those that died. Uh, the scripture tells us when Jesus comes back, our Lord and Savior comes back to get us. He says the dead in Christ shall rise. Amen. So literally God is saying, these are some foundational things that you should have a part of your life. These are some things that you should know as a believer. And, and he's literally saying that we have to begin to start there, but we can't stay there. I'll say that one more time. He said we should start there, but we can't stay there. He says we should begin to grow forward or go forward into more mature teachings. And that's when we'll begin to walk and mature in the things of God. Amen. And we're working on our walk. Uh, the topic we're talking about tonight is we're striving for maturity. Anybody mm. want to be matured in Christ? Amen. Amen. Uh, some of the indicators that we're growing properly, these are some of the things that we covered uh, two Tuesdays ago. Uh, we talked about understanding of the foundational things of Christ. Mm -hmm. That's an indicator that you're growing properly. Also teaching others what you know and practicing it as well. Uh, we also talked about when we look more like Christ or display the fruit of the spirit. We talked about we can't talk out, can't be talked out of what we believe. That's one of the indicators that you're growing properly. And our language will be love. So all of these things will lead us toward a path of maturity. A mature person can't be talked out of what they know about mm -hmm. Jesus. Uh, they're not following false teachings or false doctrines. Uh, they're strong in their faith. They're standing firm in their faith. They can't be moved by what uh, the fad is or the uh, new thing or new religions that come across. But they're born again, and they know it, and they know why. They also start looking like Jesus. If you're maturing and things start developing on the inside of you, it'll uh -huh. show up on the outside. Yes, it will. 
uh, that's one thing about uh, here in this ministry. We're not concerned about what you look like on the outside. Because when the inward man begins to change, the outward man will begin yeah, to manifest that change yeah. as well. So we come as we are, but I guarantee you won't stay as you are. Amen, amen. If you take the principles of the word of God and begin to apply them to your life, there is no way that you can stay the same. So we have to start focusing on what's going on on the inside. People can come in here dressed to the hilt. They can have on their long dress with their stockings or whatever. It does not matter. It doesn't indicate that there's growth of maturity in their heart. So we're so more so concerned about the inward man, the inward condition of the person. So when that inside starts to change, your outside will begin to change. So when you're ministering to people, they don't look the part. Mm -hmm. They don't look like what you think a born-again believer would look like. Don't worry about what the outside is. Think about what God is doing on the inside of that person and just begin to plant the seed uh, water it and let God bring that increase. Amen. Because truth be told, it's not a matter of years, but it is a matter of yield. Uh, it doesn't matter what your age is. A lot of people like to look at their age uh, and think because they're 20 and 25 years old and 30 years old that they are a grown adult. But just because you've arrived in age does not mean that your lifestyle have gone with you. I know a whole lot of folks that's 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years old, and they're still acting like a teen sometimes. Y'all yeah. not saying that. Uh, when people say certain things to them, they instead of them uh, giving them an adult conversation, they end up popping off. Yeah. Okay, okay, let me go a little deeper. Instead of you, uh, you and your uh, husband having a cordial conversation, things get heated, and it gets heated so much, instead of you remaining in the house, you walk outside those doors. Okay, I guess I'm not talking to nobody. Okay, uh, it, it could be a situation where your children aren't making the grades like they need to make, and they're running them up, and they're pimping, clubbing, and thugging. And instead of you busting them upside the head, you might need to go in your prayer closet, yeah. get down on your knees, yeah. and give God some prayer and praise. Why? Because when you mature in the things of God, yeah. you'll begin to act more like God. And that's what Paul was saying. He said, um, yes, you got those foundational things, but you have to continue to go forward into the more mature teaching. So let's look at Hebrews 5 and 12. Hebrews 5 and 12, it says this. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, mm -hmm. you have need again for someone to teach you the elementary principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is not accustomed to the word of righteousness, for he is an infant. But solid food yeah. is for the mature, yeah. who because of practice yeah. have their senses trained to discern good and evil. Yeah. This is good. This is good. The tent maker from Tarsus, Paul, he's saying to us as believers, by this time, you ought to be teachers. In other words, let me modernize and contemporize it. By this time, you should be grown up. By this time, you should come off of that titty milk. You need to open up your mouth and chew on some strong meat. Why? Because when you begin to drink on milk, it's a sign that you're not equipped in the things of righteousness. That's what the word says, verse 13. For everyone who partakes only of milk is not accustomed to the word of righteousness. But for he is an infant. Yeah. So Paul is saying another sign that you'll know that you've grown up or not will be your relationship that you have with this thing called righteousness. Yeah. A lot of people don't want to be righteous anymore. They want to do what they want to do. They want to say what they want to say. They want to be what they want to be. They want to do things because they feel like it. But can I say mature saints can't do things just because they feel like it. But when you get on this solid food, yeah. when you become mature, mm -hmm. and it says he who practices, mm -hmm. oh, yes, it says you got to practice this thing. Yeah. In other words, the tests are going to come. The trials are going to come, and they're going to keep on coming. Mm -hmm. So God is letting you know, I'm going to send them your way so yeah. you can practice, yeah. so you can be trained to have your senses to discern both good and evil. Amen. I like uh, the part where it says, 
they're unskilled or in the word of righteousness. Mm -hmm. What most people don't know about righteousness is that uh, righteousness is not something that you can get on your own. Ooh, that's uh, good. It's all about what Christ Jesus has already done. A person that doesn't know that they're the righteousness of God will live any kind of way. So they're not skilled in the things of God because they don't realize that they're the righteousness of God. When you realize that you're Christ's righteousness, mm -hmm. there are certain things that you will not do and you will not go. I use this example all the time about a king or a president. Uh, anybody, or, or p say, for instance, um, President Obama, uh, if one of his daughters was visiting Jacksonville, because she's the daughter of a president or uh -huh. pre-past president, she wouldn't go stay at the La Quinta on Dunn Avenue uh -huh. because she know who she is. Uh, she would be at a Diamond Hotel here. On, she would be on. over at the uh, Adams Mall. What's, what's downtown? Something. The Omni or somewhere. Yes, yes, because yes. she knows who she is. Uh, many of us, because we don't know who we are in Christ, we'll go anywhere. We'll go, hotel we'll with go the door on the outside. With the door on the outside where people can look through the curtain. The motel. That's oh, what that motel. is. They'll stay at the motel. What, what's the one that got the light on for you? The motel 6. We'll leave the light on for no, you. you cut that thing off. <laughs> So we have to know that uh, yeah. if we're righteous, there are certain things that we won't do. There are certain things that we won't say uh -huh. because we are the righteousness of God. There are certain places I cannot go because I am a king's daughter, and the king's daughter does not associate with certain things. Mm, that's so good. you have that's to good. take that mindset. If you're skilled in the word of righteousness, you're, you'll know that you're the righteousness of God, and you can't go anywhere. You can't say anything. Uh, what's the, what's those girls' name? I don't even remember their name no more. The Obama girls, uh, Sasha and Malia. Okay, okay. There are certain things that they can't say or do because somebody's watching them. It's some places that they it's can't go. It's some places that they can't go mm. because their life would be in danger. Come on, come on. We have to make sure that we're living up to the standard of the king's daughters that we yeah, are, the the yeah. princes and the kings that God yeah. has made us to be. We're a royal priesthood. And if we know that we're royal, there's certain things you just can't do. Amen. So you have to change your mindset about who you are. When you recognize who you are, there are certain things you just won't do, and you'll be skilled in the word of righteousness. Amen. And I love it because the uh, first thing that come to mind was royal people. You said they can't go to uh, any old kind of hotel. But nevertheless, or, or take it a step deeper, they just won't lay in any kind of bed. Royal people don't eat. McDonald's and Burger King on the regular. They have people that cater. They, ha they have people that uh, cater to their dietary needs. Why? Because they know that there is some influence on their life. And if they die prematurely, get this, it's going to impact others. So we as believers, we have to carry that type of swag. We have to carry that type of confidence knowing that how we conduct ourselves, how we live our lives, it's not just for others. For, excuse me, it's not just for us, but it is for others. So when you begin to look at it that way, you won't take your body any kind of place. You won't let your body do any kind of thing. Why? Because just as my wife said, we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a holy people. We do holy things because we serve a holy God. The goal of every believer should mm. be to c become matured in Christ. Is that your goal? Everybody in this room should want to be a matured believer in Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some things that we have to do, so let's talk about it. So where do you feel like you are on the growth chart? Anybody want to talk about where they feel they are on the growth chart? We did Amen. this uh, lesson one time before. Uh, and we started talking on, about Deacon, the stages of uh, growth and maturity. Anybody bold enough to talk about where they feel they are in their on their growth chart? Okay, I see it. I see one hand up. Uh, give us just one second. Let's get you a microphone. I should have told them we were interactive tonight. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to open this up. Get up close and personal. I don't want to hear it. We want you to tell your business so we can know where you are. <laughs> <laughs> Amen, right here. Uh, uh, Sister, Sister Baker. Sister Baker. Sarita. She don't know your new last name. <laughs> so where are you on the growth chart? 
let's see what Miss Baker feels she is on this growth chart. Amen. 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 And that and that is so good because uh, uh, one of the things that God wants us to be uh, as believers is uh, faithful. Uh, when you start looking at that word faithful, it's literally uh, another synonym for it is to be consistent. Mm. So um, God is wanting us as believers to be consistent all the way across the board. Mm -hmm. He want our he want the the fruit of the spirit or the attributes of the fruit to be to be consistent in our life. Yeah. But so many people might be strong in joy, mm -hmm. but then they're weak when it comes to temper. Yeah. Or they might be strong in kindness, but they don't have any long suffering. Mm -hmm. But God wants us consistent across the board. Mm -hmm. So no matter how we feel, no matter what our appetite says, we might be sleepy, we might be hungry. We still should be that same person every every moment of the day. So so literally, um, God is wanting us as believers to be consistent straight across the board. Why? Because he says that faithful man is going to abound in the blessing. Yeah. The reason why people can't have the blessing operating um, in its top form in their life is because they're always up and down. And every time God blesses them, they end up mismanaging what he's blessed them with because um, now now they're sad or now they're down or now now they're not doing what God called them to do. But God has wanted us to be consistent across the board, yeah. steadfast, yeah. immovable, always abounding yeah. in the work of the Lord. And the one thing about God is uh, even when we think that we're in a place where we've grown and matured, he tells us in 1 Corinthians 10 and 12, this is Paul telling us through the voice of he Holy Spirit. So anyone who thinks they are standing strong mm -hmm. should be careful that they don't fall. Mm -hmm. So even when we think we've arrived, <laughs> we always have to know that it has nothing to do with us. Mm -hmm. It's all the Holy Spirit working through us. Everybody has to know that when growth takes place in our life, if it wasn't but for the grace of God. Any of us can be in a position where we can be growing and thriving one day and a situation come and come through our life and test our faith. So we can't get cocky. We can't get bold and say, well, I, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm matured. I'm, I'm over that. Oh, she's still talking like that? Oh, my, no. We can't get to a place where we feel like we're such a muchy or mm -hmm. we have arrived. But God is saying, hey, you got to start taking inventory of yourself. Because you get to a place where you feel like, oh, you got this thing, and you got it covered, and you can handle it. I can handle it from here. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm good. When we get to that place and think that we have arrived, God is saying you got to take heed to yourself lest you fall. Amen. So let's begin to look at the five stages of growth. Uh, five stages of growth. You can write it down. Number one is the infant stage. Number two is the toddler stage. Number three is the juvenile stage. Number four is the adolescent stage. And number five is the adult stage. Uh, we're going to, uh, yeah, talk about it. Uh, before we talk about it, I'm going to call out some of these stages, and I want you to raise your hand as to what stage you believe or think that you're on. <laughs> How many of y'all believe y'all on the infant stage? Raise your hand. One, okay. We got one that want to be honest. How many of y'all believe y'all on the toddler stage? Raise your hand. Nobody. Okay. Uh, who, who was, let me see. Okay, you're on the toddler stage. Okay. All right. You're in the chair of a two. All right. Uh, um, how many of y'all like in the juvenile stage? Those juvies. Yeah. All right. I see some hands up. Juvenile stage. What about that? The adolescent stage. Adolescent. How many of y'all believe y'all have arrived, y'all have arrived in the adult stage? Raise your hand. 
matured in Christ. Amen. The adult church. All right. All right. Some of y'all didn't want to be honest. So that's a sign that you you haven't arrived at the adult stage because the Bible says God hate liars and they'll find themselves in the lake of fire. Oh, okay. Let me move on. Let me move on. Let's let's talk about yeah. uh, the different stages. Yeah. An, an infant, uh, really, if you can kind of classify an infant. Anybody got any newborns or infants? Uh, there's one thing about an infant. An infant always needs changing. Yeah. An infant requires a- attention around the clock. An infant needs care on, uh, you know, every single second. Mm-hmm. You have to watch an infant. You have to care for an infant. An infant is somebody who is just coming into the things of God. They're going to mess up. They're going to have some slip-ups because that's what infants do. Mm-hmm. Y'all know little babies, they poop, right? Mm-hmm. So we, as the ones who are matured, who are able to care for the infants, we should be taking them under our wing cleaning up the poop when they poop poop come you on, say come, come on, on little baby some, some mom don't be pooping they be doo doo <laughs> it just be some mess but yeah. we have to take them in until they get to a place of growth and maturity uh-huh. you wouldn't take a brand new baby and put them on the ground and say now go baby but that's what a lot of people believe in the mm. body of Christ when a person gets saved they want the person to do a whole turnaround in the next few weeks they expect that, oh, well, she ought to be, she saved. You still wearing that? And they'll rebuke them from the pool pit. They'll start, gonna yeah. start talking about, oh, you coming in the house of God with a hat. Those are babies. Let them grow and mature. So they are in a stage where they still need care. They still need to be on milk because they haven't gotten to a place where they can start taking in any food. So we have to be careful and patient with the baby. Those of you all who are able to care for, even adolescents can care for a baby. You know, we leave uh, babies with teenagers and things like that. So if you're an adolescent or you're a mature adult, let's care for those infants. Amen. Let's take it a step deeper. One of the things that I notice about uh, a lot of infants is they like to cry all the time. They like to cry. They like to whine all the time. And uh, the only way that you can get them to close their mouth or stop whining is you have to put something in their mouth. You got to give them something. You got to meet their needs. You got to pay their bills. You got, y'all, y'all, y'all getting this? You got to be there for them. You got to do certain things for them, for them to quiet up um, so they can continue to learn and grow and mature. There's nothing wrong with an infant because that's just part of the stages of growth. But what we as mature believers ought to do is we have to begin to uh, look at their life and understand what level they're on. Because just because the baby is crying, you can't let that crying baby cause you to cry. And that's what typically happens amongst a lot of believers. They get fed up. They don't want to take care of the babies anymore. But the Bible tells us as believers, the strong should bear the infirmities of the weak. That's a sign of maturity. When you get to become a mature saint, you'll begin to take care of those ones that can't take care of themselves. The one that still poop on themselves, the one that still whine, the ones that still cry, the ones that can't take baths. You have to be there to bathe them. So, so we as believers, yeah, you got to wash them with the word. You got to give them the word all the time. Because they, why, why, why the devil on my back? Why I can't never come up? Why I can't never do this? And you got to satisfy them with the washing of the water from the word of God. And then that leads us to the second stage, the toddler stage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those terrible twos. Yes, I remember my grandbaby Jordan was a terrible two. <laughs> oh, God. She terrific was a terrific two. two. Let me take that back. Talk about my baby. But she was terrible sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I remember, you know, um, I would have to um, uh, put her in the car seat every time I get ready to go somewhere. I would have to literally, almost seemingly lug her around. I wanted her with me because she looked so cute. <laughs> I wanted her with me because I wanted to spend that quality time. But the more time I spent with her, the more it felt like work. It felt good when she ran in the house and said, Granddaddy, and I said, Granddaddy, baby. And she run up, and I pick her up. But then later on that day, while I'm doing my chores, 
while I'm trying to do what I need to do, I would have to meet her needs. I would have to care for her. While I was wanting to eat food for myself, I would have to then stop by McDonald's and get her a happy meal so she could be happy. She wanted the french fries. She wanted the chicken nuggets. I wanted the strong meat. I wanted the caraba. So now we have a conflict going on. I love my baby. I want to do what I can do for her. But, it, but in order for me to take care of her, that meant that I could not take care of myself like I wanted to. So this is just a sign to those that are mature, those that are strong in the things of God. You're going to have to be put in a situation where you're going to have to take care of some some toddlers. Yeah. You're going to have to do some things that you don't like to do. Yeah. You're going to have to pray some prayers that you don't want to pray. You're going to have to pick up your phone call and talk to them when you want to really hang up. Yeah. But you got to take care of the toddlers. Yeah. Because but for the grace of God, yeah. you will still be there. So we as believers, we have to begin to recognize yeah. the levels, the stages of growth. Mm -hmm. and, and just because they're a toddler and you have to take care of them, you have to be mindful that you have to do what you can do for them. Because one day, the same way you take care of them is they may have to take care of you. Absolutely. And one thing about toddlers, they have temper tantrums. Uh, toddlers are selfish. Mm -hmm. They want what they want when they want it. You can't mm. talk them out of anything because, no, this is what I want. Uh, and you get them the Happy Meal, they still not happy because uh. Elsa not in it. You know, <laughs> or whatever toy that they want is not there. And yeah. I ask the lady, do y'all have the Elsa? No, we all out of Elsa. Mm. So she crying. You done spent your money. You went out of the way to yes. do something for her to make her happy. And she's still not still happy. not satisfied. She's like, Grandma, now she's still look she's still in toddler age, my grandbaby. She's grandma, I need five dollars. She know how to ask for stuff now. <laughs> I said, What you need five dollars? Granddaddy gonna take me to the Dollar Tree. Yeah. She knows how to go to Dollar Tree and they do she does little things that she can do. Just like those that are in that toddler stage. There are some things that they they can do on their own. Uh, they can't really fully take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. They can uh, say what they need. Like she, when she say, Grandma, I want to take a bath. Can I get in your tub? She just like to be in the little bubbles. Grandma, can I get in your tub? And she know how to ask for things. Mm -hmm. She knows how to um, go to the bathroom. You don't have to change her poop. Although sometimes if she waits to the last minute, she's going to mess, she on, gonna herself. mess on herself. So mm -hmm. those that are in that toddler stage, they are learning in that area, but they still mess up sometimes. And they may mess up and do some things, and you got to clean it up. So those are the stages of life in the body of Christ. All of us in here are on different phases and different levels, but we got to respect one another and where we are in life. You can't go to a school and say, everybody in here, y'all need to be in, in high school. That's not possible. There are ages and stages yeah. of growth that have to take place. Same thing in the body of Christ, same thing with the believers. Amen, amen. And then the third stage of growth. Them juvies. Yeah, how many of y'all raise your hand? I'm coming at you. These juvies. Yeah, these corn-fed freeloaders with the older. Yeah, the ones that want to run wild. The ones that, you know, um, they, they know right. But most often they do wrong. <laughs> and, it, and, and it's not that, you know, they're bad. They just like to do bad stuff. So, so, you know, literally at that juvenile stage, they're trying to come into who they are. They're trying to find who they are. They, 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 they're starting to smell themselves. They're starting to feel some type of way. Uh, those, yeah, those preteens, and they're starting to go into that place where, you know, um, they're, they're trying to find their identity. They're trying to find their purpose. They're, they're not quite grown. But then at the same time, they're not quite an infant. They're somewhere like up in the middle, kind of teetering. But, but one of the things that the juveniles do, uh, they, they, don't, they don't eat the chicken nuggets and they don't eat the hot dogs. But they still don't like the things that are necessarily healthy for them. They don't want any salad. Yeah, they, right. they don't want any broccoli. They don't want any cauliflower. They, they, they still want to eat those. They still want to eat some hamburgers. They still want to eat, you know, some 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 chicken, but 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 it's it, it, it's not 
anything strong. It's not anything that's going to cause them to be fully nourished. So, so one of the juvenile stages is that they like um, so, some things, but it's not necessarily all the way conducive for their growth. So, so we're just trying to remind you as a believer, you have to begin to want to be intentional on going to the next level, yeah. which is the adolescent stage. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're in between being an adult and a juvenile, but you're one step closer in becoming the mature saint that you really want to be. Amen. Those adolescents are very tricky. Um, the adolescents are the ones that uh, they're not quite um, grown enough to handle all of the things of God by themselves. Uh, it's like, uh, for instance, my daughter, she is 18 years old, but she's not old enough to run a household on her own. Mm. Uh, so if you're talking about a juvenile, it's a person who is developed. They are, they are mature. They can handle some things. Uh, they got some things in order. They're taking care of their business. They're handling the things that they need to handle, but they can't handle the full load of it all. Mm -hmm. uh, a person who is an adolescent, they're at a mature stage, but some things they just like, mm, I, I ain't ready for that yet. Uh, they have their moments where they have their spurts to where, um, in fact, uh, my daughter called today complaining about something about her classes. And I'm like, Cassidy, I don't work at Florida State. I can't do nothing about that. Call the school when you're in the morning. But they got me these classes, and I don't really want to do this one. And now, now I'm going to be going and getting out at 115. And all of these things, now she's mature. But you grown, though. But you grown. That's what grown I tell though. her. That's my, that's my little thing that I tell her. Whenever she complaining or acting as if she's still a child, I say, but you grown, though. And she'd be like, Mama. So that's what the Jew, that, that adoles adolescent stage, they can handle some things. They're mature. They're out on their own exploring. They've gotten to a point to where they can handle some situations and some circumstances. But the whole load of having a family and a mortgage and paying all them bills, they can't quite do that. Mm -hmm. So that's where you give them a responsibility and kind of watch them handle it until they get to a place to where they can fully handle what ministry they're in. There are some people operating as adolescents in ministry. Don't flip out on them if one day they might be doing good and then the next day they go off on you because <laughs> they're still growing and yeah, maturing. Yeah. Allow them in that stage to keep being who they need to be and mature. They got it together. It's just some couple of little things they still got to grow and get some more learning and some more knowledge so that they can rightly divide the word and handle the things of God properly. Amen, amen. And then the fifth and final stage is the adult stage. This is what Paul classifies as the ones that are on strong meat. Uh, he begins to liken it because uh, most adults, uh, if, if you're a man, most adults, they like to eat steak. They like to eat something with some sustenance, something that's going to be, you know, uh, uh, something that's uh, strong and thick. You know, we like to eat uh, steaks. And that, that's how Paul is uh, reminding us as believers. When you arrive in that uh, adult stage, you're going to, uh, your, your, your taste buds change. I'll say it like that. Um, thing, things that you desire are a little bit different. Um, it's different. Uh, a level. It's a different level. It's a different classification. And we as believers, we have to get to this stage where we're walking around um, and assessing who we're dealing with, how we're dealing with people, and not letting those that are in a lesser classification cause us to come down to their level. Remember Michelle Obama? She says, "When they go low, we go high." As believers, we have to do the same thing. Those that are on the fifth stage, if you're an adult and some kids pop off at you, you don't go down to their level. Yeah. You bring them up to your level. Yeah. How do you do that? By speaking the word of God, mm -hmm. by practicing what you preach yeah. and preaching what you practice. Yeah. Instead of uh, popping off at them, you returning that soft reply with love and kindness to them. You feel it on the inside. It's burning you up but yet you're yeah. still doing the right thing. Adult people do adult things. Yeah. Grown-ups do grown-up things. Yeah. That's the sign that you've arrived in an adult stage. But if you're still having temper tans tantrums, if you're still eating chicken nuggets, if you're still smelling yourself, if you're still cussing people out, if you're still sleeping around, mm -hmm. if you're still popping mollies, 
it's a sign that you have to grow up and become an adult. Paul said it like this. When I was a child, I did childish things. But when I became a man, I began to put away childish things. And maturity is not based on the amount of years, but how you yield to the spirit of God in your life. You can be 55 years old and still be in an infant stage. It has nothing to do with age itself. It's all about your yielding to the spirit of God. When he speaks to you, do you still hear the voice of God? Mm -hmm. Sometimes I want to ask people uh, some of the things that I see or some of the situations I see going on. I want to ask, did you hear God or the Holy Spirit tell you not to do that particular thing? Because I know the spirit of God always gives us a warning before we say anything, mm. before we Amen. react, Amen. before we do anything. The spirit of God, if you are a Christian, born again, saved for real, the Holy Spirit on the inside of you will say, don't say that. And you'll say, let me hit this button. I'm going to say this anyway. And we hit that mute <laughs> and we act like we ain't hear nothing. And the yeah. spirit of God will say, uh, don't go there today. Mm, I'm going anyway. I got to get my fix. Or the Spirit of God will speak to you and say, don't pick up the phone and make that phone call. That's not the person you need in your life. But we'll say, well, I am 35, and he is, you know, he, he seems responsible, but we don't take into the consideration the Holy Spirit speaking to us. So we can't get to a point where we're muting the voice of God. A mature believer listens for God to say what he's going to say to you. We can't react. We can't be reactive. Because one thing, you, it's, you have to start framing your words. You have to start being a wordsmith. There are certain things that you can't say how they come to your mind. Mm. We have to frame our words that they edify and that they build up. If our words are not edifying, whether they be in text, whether they be Facebook, Instagram, whatever the case may be, if they're not uplifting, if they're not building, then we need to start saying, okay, God, I need to mature in this area. We can't live our lives like we want to live them and think that we're going to be a godly example. You know people are watching your life. Yeah. You don't know how many people are watching what you do, how you say it, how you, when you do it, how you say it. They look at your comments because Facebook will put it on the bottom. Uh, such and such just commented on this. It's right there when you're scrolling. So if you're somebody has a nasty post and you say, mm, I see you, it sees you. All of those things people look at. All those likes. It, it might be. Uh, yeah, somebody can be, be tooting yeah, up with yeah, their butt in the air. Yeah. And I say it all the time. I can't like that post. So it breasts all out. I'm like, you you done messed it up. I was going <laughs> to click the like button, but. <laughs> Your your tit is out. <laughs> I, I can't I can't I can't endo endorse that. Th that's what the like button mean, right? You 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 like what they're doing. <laughs> so so we as believers We got to watch our likes. I just say that, Lord have mercy. We as believers, we have to be mindful of what we do. Because some people that snoop dogging, snoop dogging. They snooping just to see what you liking and who you agreeing with. Just so they can one day call you a hypocrite and a counterfeit of you being saved. Yes, yes, yes. So we got to be mindful of those things. 1 Corinthians 13, 11, um, Pastor Charles mentioned this scripture a minute ago. Uh, when I was a child, I used to speak like a child, think like a child reason like a child when i became a man or woman i did away with childish things mm -hmm. we got to think about this that means your thought processes have to change your reasoning has to change uh -huh. the way you talk has to change if you're maturing in the things of god we have to frame our words we have to frame our thoughts there are certain things in our reasoning that we cannot do or say any longer we got to get to a point to where we're maturing in the things of God. I'm even talking to the infants. If you're in an infancy stage, you need to start framing your words. If you used to cuss five times a week, then you need to cut that down to one. It's ways that you can yes. grow and mature. Yes. If you're yes. a toddler and you have temper tantrums, 
two days out the week. Yeah. You need to work it down to a half a day. We should have some levels of growth or something that we're working on. We can't be believers in the body of Christ making God's house look shameful because we don't know how to carry ourselves. We have to start growing up. We got to start maturing. We can't be on the job as a representative, a representative of the body of Christ and live in any kind of way. We can't do that any longer in this time that we're living in, in this season that we're living Amen. in. Amen. It is vital and important that we live a standard. It's vital and important that people can look at our life and see Christ Jesus. We can't play church anymore. The days of playing church is over. People's lives are at stake. Amen. Christ is coming back, and we got to live like he's coming back. Amen. 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 We have to. If we want to see people change, if we want to see people's lives change, we got to start changing ourselves. Put goals for yourself. If you're an infant, start saying next year, I'm going to, not even next year, half a year, I'm going to start throwing away some things in my life. So I can start becoming who God called me to be. Mature, maturity requires that you put away some stuff. Amen. Friendships, the bottle if you're drinking, cigarettes if you're smoking, women if you're running. All of those things have to be put away. Say with. that one more time. All three of them. What did I say? The bottle. The bottle you if you're drinking. See, he be asking me to recall. It be coming straight from the heavens. I don't right, know what I right, said. Right. We, we got some witnesses. Drinking, smoking, women, if you running them, you got to get rid of them. Amen. So those are the things that we have to start putting away. If we have to put away gossip, then you have to put that away. If you have to put away discord, and God hates discord in the body of Christ. Those who sow seeds of discord and then try to hide their hands like they did absolutely nothing. God hates that. So we have to start putting some things away. We can't say what we want to say when we want to say it. We can't go where we want to go because we just want to go. We have to start putting away some things. Amen. Galatians 2 and 20 says this. So I am not the one living now. It is Christ living in me. I still live in my body, but I live by faith in the Son of God. He is the one who loved me and gave himself to save me. Literally, God is saying when you arrive in that adult stage, you'll recognize that it's not you that's living, but it's Christ now living in and through you. When Christ grabs a hold of your lifestyle, you won't continue to do what you used to do. When Christ grabs a hold of your lifestyle, you won't continue to be that person you used to be. It won't be, you know, where you're saying, okay, this is just me. This is my personality. This is how God made me. No, 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 no. If it's how God made you, your actions, your lifestyle, your 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 conversation should line up with the fruit of the Spirit. Yeah. Love should fro flow out of your life. Joy should flow out of your life. Peace. All of these things should begin to flow out of your life because it won't be you anymore. It'll be Christ living in and through you. Amen. Come on, let's stand on our feet and we're going to close out. And I just want to say this one final thing. If we want to be mature mm -hmm. in the things of God, we have to be intentional about it. That means you have to put some action into what you say you want God to do in your life or what you want to be for Christ. I'm challenging the body of Forward Christian Center to live a holy life. Holiness is still right. Uh, we're not saying that you're working to become saved. I pray that you all already know and understand those teachings concerning the grace of God. But what we're saying to you is take it on up to a higher level. Live a life of standard. Don't be satisfied with the life of being just a basic carnal Christian. Because the world has enough of those. But if we stand out by living our lives through change, we can begin to change the city Amen. simply by living a standard. A standard means there are certain things that you just don't say and do any longer. There are certain things that you know you can't do. And the Holy Spirit tells you all the time what that thing is. All of us got our list of things that the Spirit of God speaks to us and say, don't say that or don't do this or don't go there. But we mute it and we say, well, today I'm going to do it. Because we have our opportunities to change. 
but we have to be conscious in our thought processes. I want you to be conscious Amen. in your day-to-day -day activities. Be conscious in the words that you speak. If you're in a conversation with somebody, be conscious of what's being said, how you're looking when you're dressing in the morning. Be conscious of what you have on. We know them outfits that we know we fine. There's certain things that if I get a feel of fine in my spirit, I'm just not going to put it on. So we have to be conscious in our mind on the things of God. All the time, we want to keep our mind clear so that we can walk up rightly. Amen. Amen. And I got to uh, share this before I walk off. Uh, one of the things the Lord laid up upon my heart is that uh, the ones that are strong, those ones that are at the adult stage and even some of the adolescents, we have to begin to take a more vocal stand. We have to begin to take a more visible stand because quite often we will see the infants that's running around the church. We'll see the toddlers that's running around the church and we'll continue to let them operate in their mess. We'll continue to let them cuss people out. We'll continue to let them whine all the time without going to their beckoning knees. So we as believers, those that are mature, those that are, you know, are strong in the things of God, we have to make sure we're available to meet the needs of the church. We can't be the ones to see a need and look another way. We can't be the one of the ones that see something going away, going on, and we turn our head. No, if God have called you to be an adult, you have to begin to be responsible in the things of God. When you see people out of the play, out of place, don't be afraid to not say anything. We have to begin to speak the word of God. We have to begin to let our lifestyle show. But when a person isn't doing what they should do, we have to be adult enough to chastise them with the word of God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Yes, the Bible says we have to speak the truth in love. We can't be one of those type of friends to where we keep key or, or laugh with everybody, but when they do something hellish, we don't have anything to say. No, the Bible says that we have to be a friend that's born in adversity. What is that? When we see a brother and sister in a weakness, we have to be strong enough to pick them up, wash the boo-boo off. We have to be strong enough to meet their needs so they can grow and mature in the things of God. We have to, we have to get past being this passive saint or being this passive Christian. The Bible says the kingdom of God suffer violence and the violent take it by force. When we see people doing wrong, don't keep your mouth closed. Open up your mouth. Speak the word of God. Correct them in love and let them grow up to be the man and the woman of God that they should be in the body of Christ. Amen. 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 I love you all. Amen. Amen. Let's put our hands together for the word. Anybody challenged to grow up? Amen. I feel a stirring and a challenge in my life. I just want to be what God is. Amen. I want to live a life where people can see my life and know that I love Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to close out. Uh, if you need an offering envelope, raise your hand. It's time to give. Our deacons have an envelope available for you. If you don't have an offering envelope, we have four other various ways or three other various ways that you can give here at the Forward Christian Center. Uh, Givelify, which is our um, online, uh, is an app that you can find in your Google Play Store or your App Store if you have an Apple device. Download Givelify to any web-enabled uh, system. Once you download it, you'll just find Forward Christian Center. When you find Forward Christian Center, you'll just give uh, donation from there. We also have text to give. Uh, you just text the phone number listed there on the screen. Uh, it's 904-584-3838. Uh, you text that phone number in your message. You'll just put tithe, or, or if it's an offering, you'll put tithe or offering, whichever one it is. You'll leave a space, and then you'll put the amount. Uh, that's how you do the text to give, and it'll give you instructions uh, once you do that, if it's your first time. Online giving is through our website, forwardcc.org. Uh, if you need to get on the Wi-Fi, it is the Partners of Forward. Uh, when you go into your Wi-Fi, you'll see it's straight uh, sh straight on our homepage. You'll be able to find it from there. All right. So we're going to bless the offering, and I'm also going to pray 
that God begins to do something on the inside of each and every partner of the Forward Christian Center. I don't believe that we teach and it just goes over your head. I believe that God wants to challenge his people in the area of maturity. He wants us to live a lifestyle that is going to challenge people to want to live right. Uh, if we live our lives in a way where people can see Jesus, do you know how many people we can reach? Because Jesus is attractive. The anointing is attractive. He is a drawer. So when we're living our life and God is blessing and keeping us and they see the anointing, we're not whining, we're not crying about everything, we're not complaining, we're not up, we're not down, but we're steady. Problems come, we praise God. Problems don't come, we praise God. Things going well, we praise God. Things going bad, we praise God. That's where God wants us to be. So I'm challenging each and every one of you tonight to start praying about what area God wants you to start getting rid of some things so that you can grow up. Sometimes we're mature in faith, but then we're uh, immature in fear. Sometimes we're matured uh, in our conversations. We know the right things to say. We know the word, but sometimes we are always uh, doing things where we are not faithful to the house of God. So whatever area in your life, that you need to work on or mature in. Just ask God to do that. So we're just going to pray. Father God, whatever that area is, God, that the people of God need to begin to grow and mature in, I pray over it. Father, your word says that Apollos planted and Paul watered, but God began to bring that increase. You can only bring the increase that is needed for their life, God. So I'm sowing the word. The seed is the word. I pray over the heart that the word is going into because that's what's going to bring the 30, 60, or 100 fold. I pray, God, that the condition of their heart, God, is open, that they're open to be mature in you, that they want to get to the next level, that they're intentional about their growth, that they're just not being carnal Christians, but they want to go hard after your glory. I pray, God, that you'll begin to do a stirring. I pray, God, that you'll begin to open up their hearts and mind to hear you when you're speaking, not to hit the mute button, God, but open up their heart to know when you're telling them no and when you're saying yes. And, God, I just thank you for the people of God that you've blessed us with here at the Forward Christian Center. Grow us up, God in every area grow us up god in that thing that you know you've been working on us with let us release that thing to you we gotta let it go so we can grow and father god whatever that thing is we let it go and we give it to you we trust you we know that you're gonna do the best for us and we just thank you god for maturing us father god i also pray for those that are giving on tonight i pray that you will bless increase them in the area of their offering, God. Increase them in their finances. Increase them on their job. Open up the windows of heaven and begin to pour them out a blessing that they won't have room enough to receive. And God, those that are immature in the areas of giving, I pray over that area for them, God. I pray that you will touch their heart, that they will begin to grow up in the area of their tithe and in their offering. God, I pray that they see that the way to get to the blessing it's not keeping it for themselves, but to give it away. I pray, God, generosity over your people. I pray, God, overflow on your people. I pray, God, a spirit of thanksgiving on your people. In the name of Jesus, and we give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's give God a praise in this house. Woo, I'm growing up. Before you leave. I want you to hug two people and say, I'm growing up. If you're bold enough to let them know what area you want to grow up in, I want you to begin to share it with them and let them know what that area is. Find you an accountability partner. Let them know what area it is that you want God to mature you in so that they can begin to assist you in your journey. Amen? Amen. And remember that there is only one way to go in God, and that is you are dismissed in Jesus' name.